It's kind of the catch-all rack that goes in between saws and planes and everything else just goes there. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright. Welcome to my shop. Uh, this is a rack that I've been wanting to make for a long time because this is probably the most used items in the shop. They're all the marking items, the squares, the marking knives, the measuring, the, uh, the mortising gauges and marking gauges, and it's all right here at the closest place. So when I'm working at the bench, I can just turn around and it's one hand away. I don't even have to really turn around. I can keep my feet planted and everything I need is right there within reach. And so this is something I've been wanting to make for a long time. Um, now, this is something that is very specific to the design I have laid out. Um, I want it to be here and I want it to come out vertical because if I were to turn this flat to the wall, it would take up a lot of wall space. Um, and I was thinking originally, I probably should have done other racks that were vertical, but I kind of like having some flat and some vertical. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at how to build this thing and we'll talk about it a little, a little more later. This project is kind of a little bit different for me in that I'm going to be figuring this all out ahead of time and knowing what I want to build before I build it. So uh, to do that, I'm going to lay everything out and try and get an idea for the size and shape. I've been playing around with this in my head for a long time, so I really have a, a good idea of where I want and how I want it to fit. I'm going to be using mostly scrap that I have from around the shop. This is a piece of uh, white oak that I had from, uh, I don't remember what else. <laughs> and then there, this will be the, the shelf at the bottom. So I'm just going to gather all these scraps and find pieces that are the right size that will work for this application. Unfortunately, a lot of it has either old finish on it or it's roughs on and it just needs to be brought down into dimension. And most of these, I really don't care what dimension they are, uh, except for on this vertical piece, uh, it needs to be able to fit between the two cabinets. So I'm going to use a scrub plane and take it down. I really had to take off about a quarter inch at one end down to almost nothing at the end, other end uh, as the board was tapered to begin with. So a few quick passes with the scrub plane and it's the size it needs to be. Next up, we can uh, test it in place. You can see I put uh, cleats on the back and just uh, screwed those on because I may end up um, adjusting them in the future. But it just fits in between these two racks and locks in place. And everything else will then be built off of that. The first thing I need to do is build an arm that sticks out close to the top. And I want this to dovetail into the side of that vertical. Now I've done a bunch of videos in the past on dovetailing, so I'm not going to go into too deep on this. Um, other than the fact that I don't lay out much of anything other than the stop mark. Uh, everything is done to eye. Uh, it looks good. I cut. Uh, I really don't spend too much time making detail on these. Uh, because whatever you cut the tail to, that's what you can mark off on the pin board. Then cutting both sides of it, we have a tail. We can then transfer those marks to the side of the vertical. And that will be our pin board. Come in with a saw, cut down to the stop mark, and uh, dovetail joints. <laughs> That's all there really is to it. It's not something that you really need to overthink or make complicated. Um, just doing it a couple times, it, it suddenly makes sense in your brain, and uh, it all comes together rather nicely. Now I'm going to pin this into place. Uh, rather than using screws, I just wanted to drive in a, a quarter inch oak dowel. And so I'll drill out a hole, put some glue in, and then pound the dowel down into place. And that joint ain't never coming apart. It uh, just makes everything a little happier. And the last thing I can do is come in with a flush cut saw and flush it off. I love these um, saws from uh, um, Saizan, I think is the name of the company. I can't ever pronounce Japanese names. <laughs> but uh, then I can come in with the plane, smooth it down, and the joint is done. I'm going to do the exact same thing on an arm that is lower, except for on this one I also need to have a diagonal piece. I'm not going to put a diagonal piece on the top one, uh, because that one there will be a magnetic strip that ends up being the diagonal piece. But for the bottom one, I'm going to add that in, so I'll show you that here in a moment. Once I have that arm dovetailed in, I can lay the next piece of scrap on there and just mark off where it intersects with the vertical and the arm. Once that is in place, then I can cut this um, piece of diagonal down to what it needs to be. And a lot of people have problems with cutting angles. I, I just find if I chalk it up in the jaw, then it will actually end up being no more an angle. It's just a vertical cut. Once I have both ends of this cut, then I can lay it back on the frame and transfer the marks to the frame on both the arm and the vertical and that gives me the locations to cut in. I'm going to be making a half lap joint 
uh, so that the vertical houses halfway into both the arm and uh, the vertical. Now, to do that, I'm going to use a marking line and uh, then cut in. I just cut down to my stop mark, which is only halfway into the piece, and then I'll come in with a chisel and remove the bulk of the material. Uh, a fairly quick and easy process. Uh, I think this half flap joint took me like five, six minutes at most. Uh, it's, it's not that difficult and uh, a lot of fun to, to take out these large chunks. Um, I just stay away from the line as long as possible and uh, until I, I'm down to basically nothing up to that marking line until I can get right up tight to it, if that makes sense. I have a whole video on making half, lap half laps as well, so I'm not going into too much detail on that. If you want to see that, uh, definitely go look at that. But once I've made the joint fit, uh, then I can put it into place, mark where it intersects with the second piece, and then rinse and repeat. Do the exact same thing with a half lap, half lap on this one. The nice thing on this one is that it's open on the end, so it ends up being just a, a half a tenon. And rather than chiseling out the work, I find it easier to come into the tenon saw and just cut down on the line, and then that pops into place. Once that is all glued and squeezed in place, then I'm going to come in and uh, put the dowels in through both of these joints as well, just to lock it in place and make sure that this joint never moves in its future. Um, a fairly quick and extremely strong joint. For the bottom, I have a shelf, and this shelf will have a whole bunch of holes in it for all of the marking gauges and things like that to, to sit in and have easy access to it. And this is just a, a large chunk of one inch thick white oak. Uh, it had a lot of um, crunkiness to it. <laughs> I love that word, I don't know why. But I needed to plane it down on edge and on face and bring the whole thing smooth. Uh, I really honestly do not care what the size in this is. I don't care what the thickness is in it. As long as it's something, give or take a few inches either way. Um, the thickness really doesn't matter at all because I'm going to be making the marks dependent upon whatever the thickness on this ends up being. So I'm just quickly making a board. The next thing I want to do is cut out a dado for this to house into. Uh, it only, it's only about an eighth inch deep. And it's just enough to keep this board uh, from sliding up and down the vertical. So I'll mark that out and just like I did with the half lap joint, cut that out and install a dado. On the bottom of this, I also want to put in a diagonal to support it. And again, I really don't care how long this diagonal is as long as it covers most of that shelf and supports it well. I'm going to be using the square to mark off on either end at 45 degrees and turn this into, uh, what is this, a trapezoid? I don't know if that's what it's called. <laughs> I've had a couple people ask me, how do you make a, a, an angled cut in from the corner of a board? And I use the very side of the teeth. You notice how I lay the saw over so that I'm using the very corners of the teeth. And this gives me a little shelf that I can put the saw on. I'm holding all the weight of the saw back in the palm of my hand and then lowering the saw in. I'm not letting the weight of the saw do any of the cutting at all. Once I have that little shelf, it's just like any other saw cut. You just go to town and slice down your line. Now on this one where it joins in with the vertical, I want to create a dovetail. And this really confuses a lot of people. How do you put a dovetail on the end of an angled board? Well, if you don't view it as an angled board, but instead you view it as any other board, just for some reason the rest of the board suddenly goes off at an angle, it suddenly makes a little bit of sense. You don't want it to be at 90 degrees to this uh, face. You want it to be slightly less than 90 degrees. And I don't care what that angle, just something that looks decent. And then once you put it in the vise to do the cuts, it becomes very obvious because you have a face that you're cutting on and then for some reason the board itself just runs off at an angle. Uh, that doesn't really matter because the face you're working on is the face that matters. Then for transferring the marks to the vertical board, I find it easy to clamp on a square and this allows me to reference the square so that I get an exact location for putting those marks in. And then just like on any of the other dovetails, I'm going to cut down on either side and then chop out the waist. And this is exactly the same as the other dovetails, just a little larger. For the shelf itself, I want to put in all of these holes. Um, all of the holes on mine, I just decided to make them all one inch. That seemed to work for all of my marking gauges. And so I have, I think it was 15 holes laid out through this. I kind of spaced them out to fit my marking gauges and what I want to get in the future. But after drilling out all those holes, um, a couple of them on the side, I wanted to remove the waste so that rather than sliding into the hole, they can slide in from the side. 
Um, I did this for my mallet rack as well, and I kind of like how it comes out. It makes it fairly easy to get in and out of. And then you can see how this shelf um, goes into the vertical, and then underneath I have that diagonal support of uh, the dowels that will then drive in through the top into the diagonal support, uh, as well as two dowels coming in from the back of the vertical into this shelf. And uh, cutting it off just makes it a little bit easier for driving it in. So rather than driving on a large piece, you're just driving on that smaller piece. And then you can see how this whole thing uh, attaches into place. And it fills out the space and uses every little bit possible. And uh, I really like how it, how it fits and, and works with everything. It came out better than I was expecting. Now the last thing I need to do is apply some boiled linseed oil. Now, if you haven't seen anything about my channel, this is uh, what I do on 90% of my projects. Uh, and for anything I have in the shop, any of my shop tools and storage, it's boiled linseed oil and paste wax. I have a bunch of videos on how I make my own boiled linseed oil, how I make my own paste wax. And I just love the way it brings out the color in this white oak. It's just gorgeous. The last thing I need to do is uh, attach a diagonal magnetic strip that will support the top arm. And then on the middle arm, I'm going to attach this uh, pocket set that I got from Rockler. And that allows me to just put in a lot of tools and fit them into the slots and switch them around where they fit. And then you can kind of see how everything goes together, how the squares can nest into each other on this vertical, on the diagonal. And uh, then I can fit everything into the pockets below. And I can use every little bit of space and still have a little bit extra so I can expand and grow in the future. All my tools are close and at use, and I can just turn around and grab it and uh, keep on going. I really like how this came out. So there you have it. This is um, a very interesting odd rack. Now, normally I don't much like the magnetic strips. Uh, that was kind of something I added in later. I don't like doing that with any of the um, with any of the cutting tools, the knives and chisels. Um, I don't like making those surfaces magnetic at all. But for things like the marking and the squares. Uh, I don't think I have as much of a problem with that, so that's why I decided to use it there, and it's just a, it's a good way to hold everything very quickly and easily together. So this is a, an, a way of fixing things that works in my shop that probably isn't going to work in most other shops. Uh, I've done this layout specifically so that I can do this, and I know that a lot of people out there, that's going to be crazy, that's dumb, it's going to have a lot of problems. Well, no, this actually works for me. It's my my system and uh, you got to find out what works for you. So I hope this gives you some ideas of ways that you might be able to store things or find that thin sliver that's three inches wide. Uh, what can you put there? might give you a couple ideas on that. I will leave a link to some of the things that I used in other videos I referenced uh, down below. And uh, that's about it for today. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can do things like this. Uh, I'm really looking forward to having the rest of this set out, and that's because of you guys. So if you'd like to find out more about Patreon or help out there, you can do so right down there. Also, if you would like to subscribe and see some behind-the-scenes footage, you can do that as well. That's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.